Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic topology. Today I would like to tell you about triangles or more strictly speaking about simplicial complexes. So why do I would like to tell you about simplicial complexes? Well, kind of if you know CW complexes and CW comp cell complexes and they are very useful, uh, simplicial complexes are very similar but more combinatorial in nature. And they play a crucial role for de defining um, homology in the end. And even more so, they play a crucial role for computing homology. And kind of the idea is that triangles are easy and from triangles, you can read of everything you want. So let's have a look. Um, so a simplex is just a, tri a version of a triangle in higher dimensions. So um, a zero dimensional triangle is a point if you want. So zero dimensional triangle is a point. I mean, at, at this stage, of course, it's kind of a matter of definition what what you like or a matter of whatever. Zero dimensional being a point as a triangle works pretty well. So let's just go with it. Um, a one dimensional triangle is a line. Okay. A two dimensional triangle is a triangle. Very good. <laughs> and in this case, I really mean filled, right? So this is filled. A three dimensional triangle is this piece here. It's a tetrahedron. So here is my tetrahedron. And I really mean the solid one. So this is filled. Build, okay. Um, similarly, my triangle here is filled. Um, very good. So, and a higher dimensional version of this is called an n simplex triangle. It's just higher dimensional versions of triangles. Um, and yeah, we would like to consider spaces that are built out of triangles. Because why? Because triangles are easy. So let's have a look. Uh, so here's an example of a space that is glued together from triangles. So here if a triangle, a two dimensional one, here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. Here are one dimensional triangles, which I should give a different color. Uh, so uh, red, for example, are my one dimensional triangles. And there are quite a few, I don't mark all of them. Then you have zero dimensional triangles all, all over the place. And let's say this one is filled here, then this would be a three dimensional triangle. And they are glued together in a certain way, namely the following, using the following observation. If you have an n-dimensional triangle, so here's a triangle, then actually, uh, as I said, this is filled, then actually it's made out of uh, n minus one triangles in the sense that the boundary is made of n minus one triangles. So here's an n minus one triangle, here's another n minus one triangle, here's another n minus one triangle. And each one of those is built out of n minus two triangles, right? So uh, points in this case. Uh, maybe a little bit more exciting, the tetrahedron. The tetrahedron has triangles as, as, as faces and each triangle then has lines as the boundary and each line has vertices as a boundary. So this is really kind of the, the main point why simplices are so great because they kind of have this induction building, right? So if you just consider the boundary, you see something that you have seen before. And the idea of a simplicial complex is that you just glue uh, well, those triangles along their boundary, as is done here in, in this example. So this is this is really a good example of a um, well, simplicial complex. So all triangles are kind of glued together uh, along a common boundary, like this one here, those two here are glued together along this common boundary, right? Those two triangles here. And that's then exactly the definition of a simplicial complex. Um, but you just have to make sure that you don't have any stupid things. So what, I, what you don't like for simplicial complexes are something like this, a missing edge, right? So if you have a face, then it also wants to have an edge. So you don't have missing edges in this, uh, this case. So this one is good. So this one is totally fine. Uh, what you also don't want are st strange intersections, right? So um, if two triangles intersect, then they intersect along a common boundary. So you don't want something like this, this is bad. And something like this is also strange if you just poke through a face that's not a good idea so this one is okay um and these are not allowed right so this is kind of the rules of the game how to stick triangles together you want to do it in a controlled way and not in some crazy fashion and that's an exactly already the definition of a, a simplicial complex um so an end simplex by definition is the smallest convex set in the only confusing thing here is that you have to go one dimension up. So my triangle in this case would live in R3, okay? 
that would like to see, think of it as being in R3. And um, how does it work? I take a certain number of points um, and I take the smallest convex set containing those points. So it always counts from zero to n because of n plus one points. And of course you don't want that they, that they lie on, on a kind of a strange hyperplane. So I really want three points uh, like this, such that I connect them and I don't want something like three points on a line because then I can't, just can't draw any triangle, right? And that's then what defines the simplex. So here are they again in uh, notation using these. So, well, smallest convex set containing one point is one point. Smallest convex set containing two points is the line. Smallest convex set containing those three points and so on. This is a triangle and so on. So this is again solid. Here's the last picture. So this is solid. Remember, filled. And this is also solid. It is completely filled. Also, those uh, end vertices, strict definition. And the point is, if you if you delete one of um, uh, those vertices of an end simplex and the remaining span one of those, one something smaller. So if I would delete, for example, in my triangle here, if I would just delete this vertex and everything related to it, then what I see is a something of smaller dimension, right? It's an n minus one thing. And you could think of it like, um, if you delete this vertex here and the tetrahedron, what remains is a corresponding opposite face. And that works in any dimension. Um, and the simplicity complex is then uh, a set of simplices, and simplices are those guys here, uh, satisfying that exactly those two conditions. Um, so you rule out condition B and condition uh, C and D from before. So you glue them together, that such a, this doesn't, doesn't appear. Okay, that's the definition of a uh, simplicity complex. That's a certain object of topology, right? something that is glued together in triangles. And what is so nice about it is actually that's not really a definition of geometry. Well, it is, of course, a definition of geometry. It's built out of triangles. But you can kind of ignore that. And there's an abstract simplicity complex, which is just a collection of sets which satisfies the corresponding axioms. Um, that correspond to the axioms from the geometric uh, simplicity complex. And those things can then be geometrically realized. So really you could think of these as being abstract sets. So here's an example. So AB means the abstract version and I can just say it's this collection of sets. And we might wonder now, wait, 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 these are not sets. Well, the convention is a little bit that they kind of use uh, those square brackets instead of curly brackets for sets. But anyway, let's ignore this. It's a collection of things. So V0, V1, V2, then I have V0, V1, I have V0, V2, I have V1, V2, and that's a collection of all of them. And they can be geometrically realized in this picture, right? So uh, the one, so things of dimension one, the things corresponding to uh, one uh, object, they are just the vertices of my triangle. Uh, the things that correspond to two, are the edges of my triangle, uh, even including some orientation. So this picture actually is horribly false. So this is, should be zero and one. This should be one and two, and this should be zero and two. So we just read off uh, the, the corners and then you have forced some orientation on it. And depending on the order of your set, it's either oriented in one direction or the other. And it's the same, this should be zero, one and two. So the face contains all three vertices, it's the whole simplex, and there's an orientation involved, which says the simplex is now oriented in this direction because, well, you just zero, one, two, right? You go from zero to one to two. Um, but the point really is, I don't need to think about triangles, I actually can think about those sets, just a completely combinatorial set theoretical definition. And it, it's nicely reflected in the geometry of simplexes, in the geometry of triangles. And turns out that those things are extremely important if you would like to define uh, homology, for example. But they're also interesting, interesting in, in their, their own way. They're kind of nice uh, combinatorial or geometrical concept. Uh, anyway, um, so let me wrap up. So the simplicial complexes, things that are built out of triangles. Uh, you can either think of them as being abstract beasts, or you can think of them as being concrete triangle things uh, using a certain number of rules. And then you might want to play some topology tricks on your uh, simplices, uh, on your simplicity complexes. 
anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.